yeah. and keep some sort of strength in the ligaments and tendons. Um, and that's how I sort of split that up. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, uh, first of all, I, like, I thought of a name. What's the name? I thought, of, like, I thought we were going to have like, the Murph and Mike Touch show. Ready? Let's go. Sick. <laughs> 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 so basically, like, there's last thing where I was like, what are, what are, it's got to be like, it's got to have alliteration. The name's yeah. got to have alliteration. So um, I was like, all right, it's got to be something. And then one of you was like, you know, we use nicknames. We'll just go for it. Like this. This, welcome to the Murph and Mai Tai show. I don't even know why it's Mai Tai. Oh, like the, the name, the name. So Mai Tai, so basically, okay, I take you back. From, 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 oh, fuck, man, I'm talking. Uh, so my third um my second tattoo the third tattoo mm -hmm. is my life philosophy right mm -hmm. so it's a latin saying which is uh omnia mea me comporto which translates to all that i am is within me mm -hmm. oh, so right. yeah the philosophy comes from you know you are your external what you own what you have da, da, da. you are you are who you are and then um internally and then that then propagates out and is like built upon my external factors. It's a whole, that, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. And so I got that, I reckon I got that in 2008. And then in 2009, I was looking to set up the company. Um, I was looking to move out of fitness first. And I was like, I got to think of a company name, right? So I, I'd allowed, I usually allow three year blocks for like growth and development. So the first three years was as a fitness first. After that, I was going to go rent some space at another studio. Mm -hmm. After that, and one was in that space of learning about how to run it, like run a gym. And then from that, go into then run my gym. And then from that, now more like the next three years. And so I was like, all right, it's 2009, my three years are up to 2010. I just start the company and it's start like a name. So I'm like, do my shit on the side while I'm working on this first. And so from that, from that tattoo, from that life philosophy, I was like, I need something that connects with me. Yep. Right? And so when you look at my ties, M I T I S E, it is within me. Yeah, nice. Yeah. That's sick. <laughs> I never I never really like put that story out heaps. You know, so people ask me, I've had people somebody like, oh what is it? Put it out in the story. And I was like, nah, because I want to be subtle. Yeah, that's cool. Can yeah. I ask you, I reckon in our first couple of You meetings, did, you did. What is my task? You know, it's a long story, don't worry yeah. about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll short, I'll shorten it up. <laughs> that's the short version. But like, but that's basically it. And so then from that like everything comes back. So like when you see it, you'll see it is within me. Yeah, you know, yeah. when I first looked at getting the logo done, I was like, do I do like the it is in like white and then outside in red? Or do I keep all as one word? And I was like, the, 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 <laughs> the deciding factor was um, for that, I was like, I'll keep it as like one, one word, no visual representation of, of what's coming out. And I was like, what I need to do, I was thinking on the lines of like Nike and Apple and um, like Microsoft, that's all one word. So when you type my ties into Google, I'm the only one that comes up like three pages. Nice. Because it's not a word. Yeah. And the funniest thing was, one, there was one, I reckon it might have been 2011 or whatever. Um, I just sort of got out and I was doing stuff in, um, I was like Inspire and someone said to me, oh my ties, that's a Latin word, isn't it? And I was like... No, <laughs> like, like, no, no, yeah, it is. I was like, no, it's not. I can tell you it's not. Um, and then this one lady, so the, the, the one thing that was the best thing ever was that this one lady, I think she was in Denmark. Her name was Mai Tai someone. It probably wasn't pronounced Mai Tai's, but it was like Mai Tai someone. She added me as a friend on Facebook and I was like, we can be friends. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm an upper name that is your name. Like, this is sick. So that's where that came from. Yeah, right. That's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. So that's where that, and then obviously... You're Murph. I'm oh, Murph. Adam Murphy. I've got to come up with like, Murph means something. M-U-R-P, M-U-R-F or something like that. i got to figure that out. you got to write, I like, I like, I like, I wrote it down. I wrote down like the Latin word and I wrote down what it means, like it is with me. And then I was like, like went through that kind of like, that process. Yeah. But my creative process is like a, a structured creative process. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I have to have boundaries with things. Yeah. You know, so as much as everything seems like, it's like there's a structure and then you can like flesh it out a little bit. Go with it. What would you go with? That would be your like. As in, like a little motto. Sort like of a little, little motto. What's your life philosophy? I, I love um, the Bruce Lee saying, I'm pretty sure it was Bruce Lee, be before you are and you will become. Oh, I, like I, I love it. That's just, that's pretty much been me with everything I've done, any success I've had in my life, is I've always believed I was going to become it, mm -hmm. done the work to become it, and uh -huh. then I became it. Yes. 
and I just know that like, that's why I'm going to uni now. Like, I want I to be it. in the NBA as a head S and C. I know I need to act like that now uh-huh. to become that later on. Uh-huh. I think exactly. too many people expect, you know. <laughs> I've talk, this man, before. talk. I've had this story so many times. People come up to me and they say, "Oh, you know, I want your job. I love what you do. It's so cool that you've got this job. You must be living the, the dream." How do I? How do you do it? How do I? How do I get there? <laughs> okay. So first of all, <clears throat> go to study. Mm. Keep studying the rest of your life. Mm. Don't ever stop. You got to do it. Absolute hell of a lot of work for free so put yourself out there get out of your comfort zone uh i I tell them i worked for free for five years yeah i was gonna i was gonna say like i wanted the 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 first murph and marta show i want to talk about that shit yeah so keep going so i worked for free for five years in sub-professional sport Mm -hmm. um just working my ass off you know doing the long hours no real thanks for anything and then eventually, through obviously a little bit of luck, I guess you could call it luck, but it's just me putting myself out there in, in the situations, mm-hmm. meeting the right people, uh, talking to the right people, and getting in my comfort zone in that way, and asking them to come work for me, yep. work yep. with me for yeah, free yeah, yeah. again. Um, that when the position came available, then after all those years, yeah. <laughs> I got the wrong. Doesn't just come. It's not like I wake up and went, I'm going to be an S&C for the yeah, Sixers yeah, and they're like, yeah. here you go. This is it. And that was after being turned down twice. So I think, I think like, I, I love, I want to hear about the turn downs. Yeah. All right, I want to hear about the failures. I want to hear about what you've done because we've all been there. And I think that people don't know that. As yeah. in like, you don't, you don't see people going, like, I got, I got shut down twice. All right. A lot of people get shut down once and they're just not doing anything again. They're like, oh, fuck it. Well, I'm just going to do anything. It's too hard, yeah. All right? Yeah. And then they get shut down a second time and they're like, fuck that. Like, that's my yeah. entire confidence gone. And then to keep going yeah. is huge. Uh, so the first time I was working with one of the, the basketball clubs that I mentioned, so the Woodville Warriors, the, who I still need to thank today for getting me, giving me the opportunity to get into basketball. Yeah, the show, man. Do it. So thanks Woodville for that. Um, because that's why I used to play with four in the beginning of my basketball yeah. life. So I chose Woodville as my team, played for them for about, uh, I think it was about eight years. And then because of knee injuries and my professional life, I decided mm-hmm. like, I'm going to finish basketball and missed it like every single second of every day because it's my world, basketball. Um, and one day I, I decided to go, okay, I'm going to find a career that's going to work for me. Mm-hmm. So I've been through so many career avenues and journeys and options that <laughs> never worked um, <laughs> because I thought they were going to make me so much money and I'd be rich overnight. <laughs> you know, like, I, I wanted to become a speaker for a while. Yeah. And I did a few speaking gigs and got paid okay money for yeah. it, but it just fizzled just because I, I had no real desire to sit down for you know eight hours a day and just write speeches mm-hmm. i remember seeing you at a speaking gig it was like back in the day did you yeah did you? i saw i saw i don't remember what you said yep. so that's how good a speaker you were but i don't remember what you said but you were you were at a you had the gig and you were you were on first and then um someone was on second okay yeah so it was memorable if you don't remember what i said yeah, I, really I don't remember anything so i was a really about. good speaker <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, I didn't mind the speaking, so I had a, a friend, and he still is a friend really, he lives in LA now, yeah. a super successful speaker, Vin Jiang, um, and he was my coach, and I thought, I want to be him, that's the life I want to lead, because you know, he's got the cards, he's got the house, he's got the future ahead of him, he's got the money, that's what I want to be, mm-hmm. that's great, I sort of saw everything he had, but not what he was doing in the background to achieve yeah, it, yeah. and what he was doing just didn't interest me. Yeah. I was like, I just don't want to do that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he used to get angry at me. He said, Murph, you've got to do all this to be able to get this. You can't just walk into the, what I'm doing now. Uh-huh. Okay, fair enough. So I got rid of it. I just, because I just didn't have the passion, you, you can't really enjoy something and do well in something that you're not passionate about. Um, so I just, Key! Uh, That's key. <laughs> key. Number one. Huge nugget. Huge um, nugget. <laughs> so I thought, okay, I've got to find something else. Let's do corporate health. Okay. There's money in corporate. We've all done that. We've yep. I did the corporate health gig for a while. Yep. Because there's money there, right? They're corporate yep. for a reason. They're, yep. they're, they're Westpac. They've got money. They can yep. pay me a bit of money. Yes, they can. They don't pay shit to anyone. No, they don't. Um, so I put out some feelers out there and got nothing back. I sent emails with like um, kits that I would do for them and they got nothing back. I'm like, this isn't working. Mm-hmm. Scrap that. What's the next thing? And I just went through. I reckon I almost 
Oh, I reckon I almost broke up with my girlfriend at the time, probably four or five times, just because I used to drive her nuts. And I just wouldn't do anything. I got to these points where she goes, "What do you do today?" Oh, nothing. <laughs> so I literally just play PlayStation and watch TV today because. I'm just so lost in what I'm doing. I, I just don't know where I'm going with my life uh-huh. right now. And it is quite debilitating because as um, this is, I don't know, a bit, I don't think it's sexist, but as a man, I want to be able to provide for a family. Yes. Right? It's, to me, I don't know if it's sexist or not, but to me, it's important. I think it's, I think <laughs> it's like sexist, no, but I think it's, it's, a, it's like an inherent, it's conditioning, right? Yeah. And, and that's, think that's it, what it's been for 150, 200 years. Yeah. You know? My, my nono did it for... My mum's family, my dad, uh, my pop did it for my dad's family, mm. my dad did it for my family. I want to keep doing that sort of thing. I don't thing. think it's sex because you're not taking away from what women can provide. Yeah, fair call. Fair call. That's what you're not, you're not taking away from that, but you're saying, I want to feel that I am providing or contributing. Not taking over, providing. Exactly. Yeah. And I just wasn't doing that at all. Yep. Um, so <laughs> it was driving me nuts. So D, uh, there's a massive conflict inside of me where... I wanted to do this, but I couldn't be bothered doing the stuff that got me to do that. Mm-hmm. And I sat down with, um, again, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, sat down with Shout her. Shout out to Steph. Shout out to Steph. <laughs> um, sat down with her and my mum and dad, who have been great support for me as well. And I said, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. And they said, what do you love? I said, basketball. You know, I, my lazy days, I spent watching NBA. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty obvious I love basketball. Yeah. Um, and they said, why don't you go back and coach basketball? And, uh, they always say, you know, players can't go back and coach. They said, just, just go do it. Just give it a shot. You never know what might happen. So I just said, okay, I'll go back and coach. Called Woodville, said, I want to come back and coach. They said, great. Were you, still, were, like, were you still playing at this time? Uh, I was playing a bit of social ball just because my knees are yeah, pretty yeah. wrecked. Okay. Um, very little cartilage left in the left. So yeah. these days impact out for me. But um, I decided, yeah, I'll go back and coach with a bit of social ball on the side. So I went back and coached. Uh, there. So they had a position available at Division Two under 23s. Mm-hmm. So I went into there and just started coaching based on what I knew about basketball already. Um, did all right. I took them from you know, one win the previous season to four wins the next season. So Quadrupling numbers. Quadrupling numbers. I've been taking that 400% <laughs> improvement. So we did that and I just started to get a bit of a feel back for some passion. Mm-hmm. It sort of rekindled a few things in my life. Uh, and even like, even though I didn't get paid a cent for it, not even petrol money, and it took away like 12 hours of my week, I still enjoyed going and Steph could still see a change in my personality mm-hmm. um, just based on that. So next season, the Div 1 coach left and they said, Adam, do you want to do one position? So mm-hmm. I'm like, progression, cool, promotion, yeah. I'll take that. Still no money. Yeah. So I took the Div 1 team and took them. Uh, again, I improved their wins by maybe like one or two. So nothing huge, but I'm going to take a success mm-hmm. there. After that, the uh, Premier League, so this is like the top state level, so like SANFL yep. uh, version or the WSANFL version of basketball. Okay, cool, yep. So the uh, level below like the 36ers? Pretty much, like, yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Um, so I decided to coach in there. Uh, so I asked the guy, the head coach there who was new, I said, oh, I'm, are you looking for an assistant? He goes, yes, said, okay, cool. I'm with my uh, hat in the ring and say, look, this is what I want to do. I'm a quick study. I love the sport. He said, oh, you don't really have much experience. And I've seen you coach. You're not that good. So, okay, cool. um, I could you put the numbers, man. Look at the stats. <laughs> uh, but, you know, look, I, I need an assistant, so I'll take you on. <clears throat> cool. So I, was, I went from Div 2 to Div 1 to Premier League within three seasons. Mm-hmm. All of it for free. All of it for free. three years of free work. At this All stage. free work. All volunteer yeah. stuff. <laughs> so, and then I didn't actually know what I wanted to do with this yet. I just wanted to get back into basketball. Yeah, yeah. So I had no direction. Yeah. I just wanted to find, to do something that I was passionate about again. Yeah. Uh, so I was in the Premier League now, and I'm doing a bit of coaching and wasn't really doing very well as a coach. As much as I love the game and I study the game and I know the game, I just wasn't a good basketball coach. Yes. Um, <clears throat> especially when the players knew more than I did about it. <laughs> That's an important thing. Uh, so one day the head coach came up to me and said, aren't you a PT? I said, well, yeah. Because mm-hmm. you, so you were doing training and stuff. I was also okay. working as a PT. Yep. Um, he said, well, why don't you take the voice for warm-up tonight? Like, okay, come on, the voice for warm-up. Said, that was great. We haven't done that before ever. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. fair enough. Take the voice for cool down tonight as well. Okay, come on. What's this? What are we doing? Stretching, fellas. You've got to do a stretch. 
Oh, okay, fair enough. Took him for a stretch. He goes, that was cool, I like that. You're going to do that every training session from now on and before okay. games and after games. So this is why you're still assistant? This is why I was an assistant okay, coach. Cool. Yep. Uh, and then a couple of boys would come up to me and say, so you're a PT, can I have a program? Yep. And, yeah, right, I have a program for you. So I have a program, give them a program to do away from uh, trainings. So at this stage I'm writing programs for these guys, I'm taking their warm-ups, I'm taking their cool-downs. These guys start to know a bit more about me, they would come to me with issues, you know, I've got tightness here, so mm -hmm. I do some isolated work for them, individual work. Uh, I start to go, okay, these guys are lacking agility, so I'm going to put some agility stuff. Mm -hmm. So, coach, can I have like 10 minutes in today's session mm -hmm. so I can implement some agility training? He goes, yeah, great, there's 10 minutes. And I'm still trying to learn the game, learn about basketball coaching, but the direction started to become narrower towards, mm -hmm. without, still without me knowing, the SNC side of basketball. Yes. Yep. By the end of the season, um, we'd made the grand final. Uh huh. Uh, sorry, we made the, the prelim, so the game before the grand final. We lost it, unfortunately, but we had a really good season. We were top of the ladder. We choked in the end. Um, <clears throat> finished the season. Coach came up to me and said, uh, I'm leaving next season. That's all there is to it. I'm not coming back. Done. I'm like, uh, okay. cool. Who's the next coach? Darnell Me, who's a 36ers left. Yeah, yeah. So anyone who knows the Sixers knows Darnell Me quite well. He was the next coach. I'm like, there's no way I'm leaving. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to give up a chance to be under someone who I used to watch as a little kid in this stadium uh -huh. dominating. So we're talking like, we're talking early 2000s and, and late 90s, don't know I mean? Uh, late 90s. Late 90s. Late 90s, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, great opportunity for me. So I'm like, I'm going to do this. Went into COVID, went into my fourth season now. So this is okay. about three and a half years into me starting basketball. Okay. So that'll be paid the same. <laughs> zero dollars. Uh, zero, still on zero dollars for my basketball career. Uh, under Dino Me, he goes, okay, you're not going to be an assistant coach. I don't want you as my assistant. I don't want an assistant at all. He's a very headstrong man, yep. a really nice guy, but just his way and that's it. There's yes. no other exception. So you're going to be my helper. You're going to take, you're going to do the scores. You're going to do the shot clock and you're going to do some SNC on the side. Okay. Okay, cool. Did that. Um, I started... Again, just finding some more passion for it because I didn't have to worry about coaching now. Yep. It was just the SNC work. Yep. That was cool. How much work was that at that time? Like how many hours a week would you be putting in <clears throat> for that? Uh, so they trained twice a week at about two and a half hours per session. And mm -hmm. then there was the game, which went for about three hours on a Saturday night. Yep. And then probably about two hours a week doing some program work for them. Okay. Outside of all so that. So we were about 10 hours a week. About 10 hours a okay. week. Okay. Um, just quickly went back to the first Woodville season as Premier League coach. That's when I met Creaky because he played for us as Mitchell in Creek. his off season. Mitch Creek. Um, so that was when I met him for the first time properly. Sort of built a bit of a friendship, and then yeah. he left to another team. Yep. So second season again with Dino Me. He's now playing for another team. Mitch. So Mitch was playing for another team. Another team. So Mitch was an important. Yeah. Is a common common thread, a constant thread here. Uh, from the first Premier yeah. League season, Mitch yeah. sort of come in and out yeah. regularly. Yeah. Um, when I found that Mitch was in his off season, because when Premier League season on, the NBL season's finished. Yes. So they have pl they have ball to play to keep them up to up to of scratch yep, yep. Um, during the off season. So caught up with Kriki a couple of times, just saying, you know, how's things going? How's your training? I saw you play on the weekend. You played well. Uh, blah blah blah. And then I found that he's doing a gym session one day. He, he looked alright, looked like a decent session. I thought, I can definitely help this guy out. Mm -hmm. I can definitely see where I can put myself into his life, his career, mm -hmm. and make it better. Yep. Gave him a call. Was, was he playing sixes at this point? He was playing sixes. Uh, I don't know if he was coming off the bench or anything. I think he was a starter, uh, but not a lot of minutes. Okay. And you could see some areas, and he knew some areas he wanted to improve on. Okay, cool. Um, so I called him up and said, Mitch, let's catch up. Let's go for lunch. You know, just... I just want to have a chat with you about a few things. I want to put something to you and see what you think. It's done. Let's go. Did you buy him lunch that day? No, I didn't actually. <laughs> I <laughs> okay. I was going somewhere with that, like as in like an investment, but you didn't. I would have liked to. Uh, I had no money at the time. Okay. Um, I paid for my own water though, so that was a good thing. Uh, so I caught up with Mitch, sat down over lunch. I didn't even eat lunch. I didn't have that much money, so... He ate lunch and I sat there with a glass of water. <laughs> yeah. And um, I said, look, I, I want to, 
I want to get involved more with athletes, professional mm-hmm. athletes. How about I train you for free? I'm okay. not going to charge you a cent. You come to see me at my gym. Uh, we'll design a program for you. We'll have a chat about what you're looking to get out of mm-hmm. it. Give me a month. Just see what I can do for you in a month. Cool. If you like it, let's keep going. Yep. You name how many times a week you want to come to see me. I'll be there early, ready to go. Yep. He goes, all right, let's start at three to four times a week. Okay. Right. Oh, so he's still playing Premier League? Still playing Premier League. Okay, cool. Um, yep. NBL off-season, playing Premier League, and he said, yeah, let's go three to four times a week. Okay. I expected one to two. So he said, he said three <laughs> to four. So thanks, Mitch, for taking advantage of me back then. <laughs> um, so I'm like, okay, let's commit to that. So we did a, did a program, got his goals and what he wants to do, designed the programs, and took him through the first month. He's like, we're not stopping. We're going to keep doing this. Mm-hmm. First month went by, second month, fourth, sixth. Um, so Mitch, not as only exploited you for one month, he's not exploited you for six He expo- uh, exploited me for almost a year. <laughs> um, okay. To put us in context, uh, to put us in context for those that don't know, right? So a regular PT at like, Fitness First yep. would charge around, let's say, 70 bucks an hour. Yep. All right? Four times a week, looking at 280 bucks a week. Times a year, you're looking at about 14 grand. That you haven't been paid. I haven't been paid. Okay. Keep so going. still on zero dollars. Still on neg- I'll, I'll say you're on neg- <laughs> negative. Negative. <laughs> Financial. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I actually didn't mention the first time I got turned down for the Sixers. Okay. That was my first Woodville season when I met Creaky. Okay. Because he said there's a spot open. How about I put your name forward because I've seen you do some stuff here. Okay. So was it just after the... So you first year as an assistant under Daniel? Yes. Okay. Uh, before Daniel. Before that, Before that okay, so the coach that left yep, that was year. with him that okay. year. Uh, I'll put your name into the mix and see what happens. Put my name in, and I thought, I've got a good chance here. I'm already in a semi professional sport. Yep. It should be good. Um, they didn't even tell me to get the job. I just found out that they're doing training already. And I was cut. Really, pretty torn up by that just because I thought I'd at least get to go and meet, yep. have a chance to talk and sell myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That went. So I thought, crap. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep going, find something okay. else. Next season went by, um, training Creaky for a while, and another opportunity come up for me to get into the NBL. Okay. So Creaky's like, again, I'll put your name into the mix and see what happens. Go on, I'm not going to promise anything, let's just, let's just see what happens. This time, Joey calls me. To Joey Wright. Joey Wright, Current head coach. Current 36th coach. Current coach of the 36th. Okay. Calls me up in his um, full American accent that I hardly understand still. Was this his first year here or not? No, this would have been his third. Okay. Third season. Um, calls me up and says, uh, Adam, I hear you're doing good things with Woodville. Um, let's have a chat. Cool. Go and have a chat with him. Um, and I'm like convinced now that I've got this job. Like, this is it. I've, I've done this. I've achieved this. I've got the job. And I'm, I'm the mo- at that point, I was reading a book by Tim Grover. Relentless. Relentless. I'm reading for the second time right now. It's, it's in my bag just over there. It's brilliant. <laughs> hey, let me, I'm going to get it out and show everyone this one. Keep talking. Keep talking. Uh, that book, I was, I'm not a huge reader. I like listening. So I can listen to podcasts and listen to, that's the one. Uh, right here. I listen to podcasts and listen to audiobooks, but I'm not a great reader. Um, but that book, I finished within like, I reckon, six days. Yep. And I was probably halfway through around this time that I thought I got this job. Okay. And I'm reading a book, probably like, I know, midway through, as I said, and I get a call from Joey. <sighs> book is meant down. to be. Joey, how you on? <laughs> Didn't get the job. And I seriously just sat there for like, I reckon half an hour, just fully <coughs> drained, exhausted. Mm. Um, I'm not going to say depressed, that's way too serious. Yeah. It was, I was just like, Fuck, what, what yeah. do I do? And, and this was the second time? Second time turned okay. down. Um, and all I did was pick up the book and kept reading. So I think uh, the key with this, the reason I'm reading this for the second time now, is that Tim Grover was Michael Jordan's first trainer. Yes. Tim Grover was his initial contract, I think it was three months, he said, with Michael. Yeah, so he went, weeks, he, yeah. he, two weeks, yeah. So he went to do, uh, he basically got his sports science, exercise science degree. Um, and then approached all the NBA players in North Carolina. I know it's because I did loads of recent Reddit. Um, and everyone turned him down. Jordan said yes. And then his contract was for 12 weeks. And he stayed for 17 years. Right? 
Okay, it took on Kobe and Wade. And Kobe, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Attack Athletics, and this thing. Like, I'm like, I would love, like, Tim, what was this? Yeah. Shout out. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll come. Tim. To, we'll come tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, okay, so you can read the book. So I picked up the book and I thought, there's no point in me sitting here any longer and dwelling on what should have happened, could have mm. happened, didn't happen. I'm just going to keep reading. And I kept reading, kept reading, went to work that day. My clients could tell I was a bit down. Yep. I had to quickly shift and turn that around. As you know, you, know, yep. you don't show your emotion to your clients. Cause don't show emotions ever. Es- <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, they don't really care. Yes. Your clients want you to be there for them. Yep. Um, so I had to turn that around pretty quick. And I just got back on the horse. I said, okay, let's do another season with the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Let's go and prove myself again. Cricky stayed with me. So now, so Daniel's still <clears> coach? Daniel's finished. Uh, Daniel's still coach. So I finished off that. Um, so going to the next season of Premier League basketball. Yep. Again, I think they trained Creaky for another season again. So now was Creaky like still, was Creaky at Woodville? No, so Creaky was back on the season at Woodville. But you were still doing stuff for Woodville? Still doing okay. stuff for Woodville. Um, so Creaky's second year of taking you for a ride? Creaky's second year of taking me for a ride. All right. Um, and he, he, yep, pretty much that was it. <laughs> but I, I just thought, if I just keep proving myself, I keep doing this, still zero dollars. Yep. Yeah. Keep doing this, keep working for it, keep just getting my name out there. And Cricket was great with this because even though he didn't pay me any money and I didn't ask for it, I didn't want any, he would post yep. consistently. He came in, he'd tag himself where he was, um, he'd tag me in the same situation. I would do videos and share it, and he would share them back again. So mm-hmm. there was just that constant link and constant bombarding on social media of what I was doing for him. Yep. Um, he made the starting five permanently. Yep. Not long after that. And then the job opportunity came again. Yep. We were just talking one day, I remember exactly, he was outside of my gym and we we're talking about the six and he goes, Oh like he just forgot to tell me in the first place. He goes, Oh, there's a position. This is why you're here. This is yeah. why you're here. Why do you think you're here? <laughs> um, yes, there's a position available again. We just decided to move somewhere else with our S and C. What do you think? I do what do you think I think? Go, do it. Get it. What are you still here for? Go yeah. do it. I uh, went and told Joey. Joey gives me a call again. Uh, Murph, I've got your number in my phone still. Oh, yeah, because yeah. so on, so on. He goes, all right, come in, let's meet again. Okay. Down here in the office. So uh, we're at Titanium Security right now. Yep. Right so there, down there. here, is that the second call? Yeah. Uh, court two below us, court yep. one's on, you can see in the middle. Yep, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Um, in the office. This is, this is my second home. Yep. This is my second home. So... Went downstairs, watching him do a bit of coaching first, goes, let's go. I'm nervous as hell now. I'm just like, uh-huh. I don't know if I can handle three times getting turned down. Yep. Went to the office, sat down with him, had the chat, goes, look, I love it. I love what you're about. I love your attitude. I love the fact you've come back, even though we've spoken before. Um, you've obviously done really well with Creaky. We're impressed with his uh, progression. Mm. Let's, let's do this. You got the job. Got the job. He rang me. He had to go do the whole yeah, know, yeah, the, yeah. the board thing, but he rang me back and he said, uh, "You've got, I want you on board. The board wants to go with someone else, so you need to take less money than anyone else has before." <laughs> but you're getting money now. Really <laughs> you're getting money. I'm just like, dude, I get paid. <laughs> 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 okay. Yes. Yep. Yep. So I just said, <clears throat> he goes, "Do you want time to think about it?" I said, no. Just, mm. yeah, I, I'm, I'm in. Doesn't, I'm, I'm at negative $35,000 but now. Of course I'll take it. Of course I'll take it. So <laughs> I got signed for my first contract in professional basketball. Yeah. Um, when was that? Like 2000 and... So we're in 2018 now. You've just finished your career. So this is the 16-17 season. Okay, yep. Yep, so 17-18 is my second. Yep, so yep. about to start my third and fourth. Yep. Um, so yeah, got signed for the first time. What, Finally. What to do? Like, when you get signed, that, that feeling... When I what found was your next? Like I've had some big things happen, right? Yep. Like my first when I first signed the contract for my gym, my first ever my first ever gym, I signed the contract. I got it. The first thing I did was I took myself out for feed and coffee, and I just sat there. Just let it <laughs> that was it. I just was like, I need food. I have a coffee. I'm just gonna sit and not tell anyone. Yeah. Right. I just processed it, and then fucking everyone knew. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the first thing I did. <laughs> Very similar. I, I was in, already in a situation, you know, Ben, client Ben. Yes. Yep. Uh, ben Wolvert. Um, so I was in the middle of one of his sessions and I said, I said to every client, I'm expecting for that day. I said, I'm expecting a call at some point today. Yes. Okay. 
Um, so if it happens, do you mind if I just run off and answer it? Everyone's cool. My yeah, clients yeah. are brilliant. Yeah, go for it. That's fine. So it was during Ben's session. I ran off. What's going on? He goes, yeah. So that's when I had a little conversation. The mm -hmm. board says, this, yeah, do you want to have the pay cut? Yep, 100% guarantee. I hung up the phone. I just went, <sighs> went back inside. <clears throat> and Ben's like, what? So I've got the job. It, it, I've got it. It's great. He goes, big congratulations, all that sort of stuff. I just went straight back to work. I straight didn't, I didn't straight even, back into it. That was my, I reckon, a 10, 15 second celebration. Yeah. Back to work. Um, but when I got home that night, like, I probably had, I don't know, the next couple of hours of work with clients. Mm -hmm. Back home that night, walked into the house, Steph turned around, looked at me, and I almost cried. It was just like, well, as I said before, there's five years worth of effort put in. Mm -hmm. um, I started PT in 2005, so yep. if you want to take it back to then, all those yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. The, the PT wasn't an easy world. No. It's not that glamorous. It's nope. not that glorious. It's hard work. You're always going to be doing something. You can never get comfortable, settle. So from 2005 to this point, I've struggled, had success, had failures, pushed myself, whatever. At this point, I've gone, now I'm something. Yeah. Now I'm going to be known. Now people are going to yeah, look yeah, at me and yeah. go, he's an actual strength conditioning coach. So I, I almost cried. Uh, Steph did cry. Yep. Um, two seasons later, just signed a contract. <laughs> two more seasons. Oh wow! Okay. So You're I've, sick. Um, Congrats, man. I told you that. No, you told me. No, you told me for next season. You told me you got the next next one. So I've got two more. I've been signed for two more. Sick. <laughs> so that's... thanks, Creaky, for taking all Murph's money. <laughs> <laughs> well, Take my time. Take your time. Take your time. That's sick, man. So yeah. Extremely happy with that, and again, like freaking those. Have, have you got more money? You got pay rise. Yes. <laughs> okay. Good. Yes. Ah, fantastic. That's good to hear. Um, That's good to hear. I'm doing okay financially right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the best thing about it is, so we know that in our industry as well, we got to go through challenging clients to get to the good clients. Correct. Correct. And even though they're all good in their own, in their sort of way, some of them just don't really suit your style, suit what you want to do with your career and your life Correct. and you just yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a bit of you know clashing of heads every now and then since i got the job i've just been i've had the ability to be able to say these are my clients this is who i want to work with this is the demographic i love that i want to be around and it's those i think there's three really important factors to consider when taking on a client one they have to be fun they've got to be good fun yeah they need to be a bit of, they need to be a bit self-motivated. Yep. I don't want to have to do all the motivation yep. for them. Yep. Because it's just, it's fake. So it's this fake. is, this is PT, but I also think for like, it does also extend to, to S&D as well. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Just so, so we can like differentiate yeah. between, you know, because we'll, we'll talk about things in the future, which are like purely S&C based. Yeah. And then that might be purely PT based. Yeah. You know, yeah. So this is for the people that you want to work with in general. It's, it's just so important. Like, I need to have fun in what I do. Yeah. If it's not fun and I get along with the person, I don't know why I'm there. Yeah. I don't know why they're here to see me. It's, it's wasting their money, yeah. which I don't like the idea of. Yep. And it's wasting my time, which I really don't like the idea of. Yep. You know, Full-time student, a husband, uh, Sixers coach. And fashion connoisseur. Fashion connoisseur, which I recently found out. <laughs> yeah. I don't have, it takes a long time to... To put this together, <laughs> you don't wake up like this. <laughs> so I had a little story from last night on Instagram, but <laughs> yeah, um, I just don't have time to yeah, be, yeah. to be not enjoying my life. Yeah, um, yeah. Also, the third thing. So the first, the first one was fun. The second one was self motivated. Yep. Third one that you want to with, with like when you're looking for clientele. Oh, what was it? They've got to be willing to pay now. You've got to be willing to pay. You've got to be willing to pay. So I think that's probably another, like we just want another time I reckon yeah. as well, but you, you need to differentiate yourself somehow, some way from the the new guys coming in, nothing against them, but they're new. Yeah. And I put myself in that same basket when I was yeah. new. I didn't know a single thing. Yeah. I knew nothing. Yeah. But that's, again, that's a whole other... I think, I think we're going to like, I'll give a little story on that. So, because you were a fitness first as well, right? Uh, <clears throat> my first four years, I was at a gym, yep. and then went to Fitness First, fitness to, first. Yep, for a year. So, as you would know, like at Fitness First, back in, you know, I was there from 2007 onwards, right? So, you would have been there. 2009. 2009, yeah. yeah. 
So 2007, 2010, and I got out, like I was doing engineering before that, and then did like PT certifications, and then from that went to Fitness First, and there's this like Fitness First Adelaide City, which is now uh, Good Luck. Mm -hmm. There was a culture of education, uh, which, was, which was rare to find now, I think. Um, and was also rare at that time, but of, of the things that were happening, like fitness was very supportive of trainers learning, right? So I've come out of the certifications and gone, I know some shit. I'm gonna train some people and they're training really fucking well. And I got to us I got to the, the city and I like you need to do this seminar, right? By Donald Carr. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna shout out Donald. Who? Donald Do you mean, do you mean Donald? Donald Carr. <laughs> Donald? D? No, 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 no. Don Don just an L. Yeah. So Donald's from, from Sydney, Donald check stuff and a whole Donald. bunch a whole bunch of stuff, Donald. Thanks for this, because I don't think you know, I went to the seminar, so it was three hours on the squat. Yep. Three hours seminar on one movement. Yep. And I was like, how can this guy put me three <laughs> hours on the squat? It's ridiculous. I learned, as you would, as you would learn as well, lunging, squatting, leg press, you name it, leg exercise, I learned it, all the exercises in about three hours in the course. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how can I spend three hours on one exercise? The end of the seminar, I walked out and I was like this. <laughs> I can't train anyway, I literally my, my next client was Fion right so I've talked to Fion for about five years but Fion watching this one I come out the seminar I was like I don't know what I'm going to do with it I think I just put the roller for like 45 <laughs> minutes <laughs> because it was that it's that level of you know you, you think you come out knowing something no matter how good your your cert 3, cert 4 course is or if you deployment or your advanced deployment no matter how good you think they are they're not comparative to what you um, would be working with yeah you know, and, and the, the contraindications that come up and the clientele issues that come up and the things that you're dealing with on a daily basis, like you don't have the scope to learn. And that's why I think um, when you're talking about when you want to get to like to get to where you've gone is you don't stop learning ever, you know, and no matter what path you take, you have to keep learning. Right. And so it, for me, it was like I had a basis of learning from uni and then from that, like I, I left engineering, I was like, that's not my thing. And then got into the Cert 3, Cert 4, and I was like, this is easy. I, I think I dropped one mark, and it was a shitty guess that I took um, in that, because you're not taught to study heaps. It's like, the, the, and we talk about that all the time, as in, like, standards of the industry. But then from that, when I got, once I'd done that seminar with Donald, I was like, there is so much more that you can learn. And I think I, I did 40 to 50 seminars over the three-year period, and then a mentorship, and, like, all that stuff. And then from that, you, you just books and articles and, oh. Anything. Onwards. And even if onwards. It's, it's crap, you can still look at it and learn something from it. Exactly. That's either, no, that's not going to work. Yeah. That's crap. Or, yes, like we were saying before, you, yeah. yes, I can grab it, tweak it, modify it, implement it somewhere yeah. in the program. You know. But you have to understand, like, <clears throat> I think that the foundations, you have to understand the foundations first. Absolutely. But in depth. Yes. You know, because a lot of trainers coming in, like to now, and it is no offense to them, they don't know what they don't know. You know, some lot of coming in now, we know some stuff, and they jump on, I like to call them fads, but they're not really fads, they're like, it's a, a select portion of, of, you know, physical conditioning or training, or, you know, a new instrument comes in, um, like a TRX or a kettlebell course or whatever, and they'll take that, and then that becomes a thing, and then until the next one comes in, then that becomes a thing, yeah. whereas when you're looking at the types of, types of courses that come in, and types of, like I said, the fads that roll through, there is, an, there is an area for everything. You know, you can use each one within the context of a, a, full, a, like a full training program. Yep. Now, you do need your mobility work. You do need your strength work. You do need your power work. You could use TRXs for your suspension training. You could use like, your Olympic rings and your, and your bells and whatnot, but you've got to understand those fundamentals in depth first and foremost. Like we said, <clears throat> the squat is still around for a reason. Exactly. <laughs> the, the deadlift is there for a reason. Uh -huh. It worked. They, they work really, really well. Uh -huh. But you need to know every single complexity of those yep. movements yep. to do it without risk. I think the biggest thing I took... And where to put it into your program. And where to put it in your program. Yeah. You know, and I think the, the, the thing I remember the most is what I took away from the, the squat seminar. Of, it was like, <clears throat> Donald went through every like joint from you know, the foot up. Right, foot and ankle up through to the um, like the shoulders and how they affect the squat and da, da, da. And I was like, came over and I was like, do you mean I'm gonna assess my client's big toe? <laughs> like I'm gonna watch how they plant her, like their, the flexion on the big toe, what's happening here? And I was just like, yes, I do. <laughs> you have to understand, like from that, level, not not to the extent like you're not gonna be a surgeon, you're not gonna be a doctor, you're not gonna be, you're not a physio, mm -hmm. you're a trainer, so you're still gonna have the understanding, 
the basic foundations, and then obviously that's when you, you refer out what yeah. your, what your script has got, but you've got to know what's happening when you're there, you yeah. know? And so I think probably one of the best packaged courses that, that I ever did was um, FMA with Mark Buckley. Did yeah. you ever do that? I haven't done that, no, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. Really good. So like the Czech, the Czech stuff that, that a lot of trainers had foundations in, especially in the you know, late 2000s. Yeah. Um, the Czech stuff was really good for assessment, understanding biomechanics and anatomy and, and, and stress systems and hormones and whatnot. But I think that the FMA, like Mark was um, a Czech, he was a Czech instructor. Mm -hmm. um, he taught the courses and what he saw was what I strongly believe in now is that it's on like on gym or at gym assessment and then modification. So you need to be able to see someone doing a squat and be like, ankles, yep. knees, what's happening and how do I fix it yep. there and then? Because as, as he was saying, like Mark's from New Zealand and he was working a lot with the rugby teams over there. And so you've got a big, strong, like powerful guys that if they get injured, you know, they still need to be able to keep them big and strong, but just eliminating what, mm -hmm. you know, what the injury is and, yeah. and working around that. You can't afford to have a six week break trying to rebuild the, the structures and the systems. Whatever. You need to be, they need to be strong playing yeah. one to two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's huge. Like to me, that's huge. And so then moving from, it, it, to moving from then PT work, Right, and then you start to take on you know sporting teams and um, the basketball clubs, and then you took on creaky and whatnot. So, what what did you do then, or what did you have to study then, or uh, like self study to get creaky from like maybe a bit part player up to starting permanent? Because this is a big question, man. Right? This is a big yeah. question. Well, I think the biggest thing that, <clears throat> and this goes for not just what I started with creaky or did with creaky, but what I actually implemented into the sixes when I first came in for my first season. I'm going to check this for a second because this is a huge question here. I'm going to make sure we've got oh, a bit of that. Alright, cool. Um, is, we've got time. So what I, what I found I needed to do after talking to some of the guys and seeing what they did a little bit last season was every, most of the stuff that they did and I've heard of what they did was uh, sagittal plane movements. Okay. So front and back, uh, back and forward movements. And... Any kind of really, I don't know other than running any sport that's just sagittal plane. Darts. Darts. <laughs> <laughs> pull. Hey, pull. 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 Yep. I'm staying corrected. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> any kind of ball sport, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. just sagittal plane. <laughs> um, so these guys, you know, they were doing some big squats, they were doing some deadlifts and some cleans and all fantastic exercises, and I love them. But they didn't know how to move laterally. They didn't yep. know how to use their transverse plane, uh, transverse plane or their, their rotational front plane. plane. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't understand, they didn't realize their bodies could do that in the gym. Yes. So yep. these guys were amazing on court. I mean, they're professional athletes in basketball. They're great on court. Took them back to the gym and said, do a wood shot. They started the first brick. So they started on just body weight, <coughs> gym their hands in front of their body, um, performing rotation exercises. So when I started doing this, they're going, what, what is this, this crap? Um, I'm going to say something now that's going to be quite offensive to some people. Say it. No, no, what? This is the Murphy Martha show. Except the fucking one. <laughs> What's this CrossFit crap? Oh, that's rough. <laughs> <laughs> no, hear us out. <laughs> because CrossFit has context. <laughs> CrossFit is great. But not but, for professional athletes. And not for everyone. Exactly. Then This could be a whole podcast Oh, we're right here. doing it. We're doing it. I, I do take CrossFit... Um, programs and mm -hmm. tech and exercises and use them in my program. Correct. So the idea of CrossFit is great. The way it's implemented is not great. Exactly. You have to I've understand too many the context injuries. first. Yes, yep. without a doubt. So it's not a full bag on CrossFit. I do like CrossFit. It just needs to... Just it, it's a the, paradox. Rock up the gym tomorrow and someone's CrossFit is my other like, <laughs> God's dead. It's just, <laughs> it sits in this paradox for me where it's, it works and it doesn't work. Yeah. It works in some areas and not others. But they said to me, that's what they said to me, yep. what, what is this? And I said, look, this is training. This is, this is functional-based training. This is sports performance-based training. It's going to relate. It's all about specificity at the mm -hmm. end of the day. You, what we do in this gym, you need to pick it up, pack it up, and unpack it back on the court again yep. and perform that movement here in your uncertain environment. So it's, We're going to pick up on that again in a little bit because I've got so much on that as well. So much on that. Yeah. The, yeah. And that's just hugely important in sport. That's like no. probably number, the number one biggest rule is specificity. No. 
Um, so I took him through all those other planes of movement and doing these you know, multi-directional lunge movements and the wood chops and you know, back bends and uh, deadlifts with rotation mm -hmm. movements. And they, there's like, what is all this stuff? And they're falling over and I better not do an ankle this. And this is, this is ankle prevention stuff. <laughs> what are you talking about? I said, just look, just give me the preset. Just do the programs. Give me the preset and just see what happens. Mm -hmm. you know, see what, how, how your performance will change, good or bad. Let's yep. see what happens. Um, that season, we went from the previous season where Joe said to me, be careful with my players because the last SNC um, created a lot of lower back pain and injuries. Mm -hmm. Be careful with the players what you do this season. Because he yep. heard that I was giving them new stuff. Yeah. Uh, but you he still like gave me... Functional shit. Yeah. Well, that, functional <laughs> shit. that CrossFit crap. We're going to talk about functional as well yeah, because, yeah. you know, we've got a whole... We've got, we've got so much on all this stuff. Exactly. Yeah. This, is, this is day one. This is day one. <laughs> um... And the joy was great because he gave me full autonomy. He said, yep. I'm not going to question what you do. Yep. I'll say something, but I'm not going to make you change yep. until you fuck up. Yep. Then I'm going to be on you like a ton of bricks. Don't fuck up. Do not fuck up in this industry. Just don't. <laughs> Reputation gone. Um, so, so you're saying you went from that season with the low back pain into... One soft tissue injury the whole season. Which is huge in professional sports. Huge. At the highest level. In, huge. Yeah. Uh, so no, sorry, my fault. My first season was two. Okay. Two, uh, two hamstrings. First season. Different players, same way. Different players. Okay. Um, and I went away with that result as upset with myself. Yep. I thought that's just not good enough. Damn. How? How? I know. How can, uh, with what I know and what I'm passionate about, how can that happen to my players? Mm -hmm. So I thought, what can I do? And they are both hamstrings. So I took that as a pattern. There's something I'm yep. doing wrong in my programming for this sport, for this these bunch of players that's creating this injury. What is it? And I went back through my programs and reassessed them all and figured out that there was just, the ratio was wrong with the posterior and anterior stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I went back and redesigned the next programs all based on improving hamstring strength and hip mobility, hip yep. strength. Went to one um, so soft tissue injury. Yep. So my season just finished, the 17, 18 season, we had one soft tissue injury. Was it a hamstring? It was a hamstring. <clears throat> yes. I'm still confused how it happened. Yeah. Uh, this is the Mitch Creek did it, so sorry, yeah. Creaky, where he, he bent over in a warm-up and ripped his hamstring. Off the bone. Off the bone. Sometimes, so on that, <laughs> right? So on that, well, like, that, that. Every every time like the sentences that you're saying, I just see like like pop this is dropping. And this here is like there's so much I could talk about under that topic. And I think you need to understand like with professional sports, you you are never almost I say one one in a season is is exceptional. But you are never going to get a full season where you've got fifteen to twenty players under your care doing programs that are going to be completely fine the whole time because yeah. they have put their bodies on the line. Every game, every training session, because that's the nature of their sport, right? And that's, yeah, yeah. And that's the job. Yeah. So you will never completely eliminate it. I don't believe no. because you're also going to look at the, like the anthropology of the the player, the background of the player, you know, their rest recovery cycles, and and these are things that you may or may not have control over. Yeah, how diligent they are with taking care of their bodies away from you. Exactly. But I mean, you only see them for I see them for about four to five hours a day. Yep. And that's five days a week. Yep. What are they doing all that other time? Yeah, yeah. You know, what are they eating? How are they looking after themselves? You, know, you can use the very top of the league of the world in basketball, LeBron James. Mm -hmm. I found out yesterday he spends $1.5 million a season mm -hmm. purely yep. on his body, yep. on his health. I was going to throw that out there because that's, that's, we were just watching the, uh, the game. And um, exactly right. You know, but that's outside of the team stuff. Yeah. Because he yep. doesn't pay for team training. That's all free. And, and so you're getting, number one, to be the, the SNC or as part of the SNC team on the Lakers or of the Lakers is huge, right? So mm. you've, got, you've got to be good in your field. Yeah. And when I say you've got to be great in your field to get to that point. So you've got a great team around you and then to spend 1.5 mil extra is, is massive. Yeah. Is massive. You know LeBron plays for Cleveland, right? What did I say? Lakers. 
Oh, sorry. No, no, of course. No, I was thinking about I think it's Golden State for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know who plays for Cleveland. Okay, okay. I'm rooting for them in the finals. So I'm, I'm, that's, I was going to tell you before, but I'm going for them. Come on, Curry. <laughs> Golden State all the way. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you're saying. So, at, at that level, he still spends that much on him. Yeah, himself. absolutely. Because yeah, he's very trying to it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's why he's still doing what he's doing at 33 years old. So, was it seven, not 17 seasons in the league? How many? Oh, I'm going 13? to say 15. 15? Yeah, it's, it's a lot. I'm yeah. pretty sure it's 15. And that's a big thing in, in the book, in like Relentless as well, is it, Tim talks about, um, you know, being, he talks about being relentless, so from good to great to unstoppable, right? Mm. But in order to be able to do that, like some players get to play NBA one year, two years, average lifespan maybe seven years, but to do consistently great things, let's say 15 years, you know, you've got to have, your entire focus is on your body, right? And obviously team plays on other topics on your body, and so you are getting... You know, at this level, you're getting four to five hours a day with the players, and is that all? That's not all manipulation work or training work or you know. No, that's not even that's yeah. not even with me. Exactly. Personally. That's them on the court with coach. Yeah. And so with you, you might have what two hours, an hour. Not even. Yeah, maybe maybe an hour on a gym day. They'll be with me for an hour in the gym. Yeah. With me for fifteen minutes warm up. Yeah. Ten minutes cool down, and that's it. Okay, so you're looking at an hour and a half. Yep. And so, outside that hour and a half, like obviously they still do their, 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 um, the training court, like the coach, so outside that, let's say two hours, and you might see them training or whatnot, they've still got 22 hours every day to ruin your good work. Mm-hmm. Easy. That's, that's, how I, that's how I think about it. Yep. And how can we manage what we do as, as S&C coaches and as, as strength coaches and as, as trainers to, to put the best into the limited time we get with them? And so then to take it back to the injuries gas, to have one soft tissue injury or, and to really minimise those numbers, you do have to start looking into, you know, the, the body as a whole and the understanding of the lateral plane, transverse plane, sagittal plane. Mm-hmm. And then you mentioned that you like touched on it before, which I do want to go into more depth um, in future, like future videos about, and like our future podcasts about ratios of posterior to anterior lateral training you know, the whole, the whole scope of, okay, what does it take to get a player from here to function at the highest level? And it's not just one plane. No. You know, and so this is something, we, like I said, when I, when I go through, we'll review this, I'll be like, topic, 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 yeah. topic, because there's so much in it. Um, but so I was, I was interrupted, then. you get to two hours a day with the players. Yeah. And so to get the injury rates low. So then last season we had <coughs> Kruger with the hamstring off the muscle, off the, the bone. Yep. Which was a freak accident, though. Which is what they've sort of... See, quite typically with an injury from what we've found, and I've spoken with the doctors and the physios, and we always come up with the same conclusion that every injury starts somewhere. Yes. It's like, oh, I've got a niggle. I've got yep. this little... It might, how many, how many is tight mode can you give me a stretch? I record that, okay? Yep. Had to stretch creaky today. For whatever reason, I don't know what the reason is. Mm-hmm. It could just be as simple as it was tight. We did a gym workout two days ago. Or it could be potential beginning of an injury. Yep. Who knows? Give them a stretch. Next day, oh, how many... Stiff again, can you give me a stretch? Okay, that's two days in a row now. Mm-hmm. See what happens. Three days in a row, four days in a row. Do you write these down? Like, are these noted in a, like a file or...? Uh, we So we got the physio, the doctor, and myself have yeah. an online an yeah. email yeah, yeah, yeah. portal that we use. So I'll write down <coughs> on a list, this is what I did with these players today. Yes. It okay. gets sent into the cloud and it's yeah. always there for us. So that if the board ever asks us, you what's this injury about? Through. This is okay, what I'm cool. about. Yep. Um, so yeah, we know that after like five days of stretching and no improvement, there could be something going on in there. We need to look into this a lot further. Correct. Let's do some more testing, go see the physio, go see the doc, get an MRI, see what's going on. None of that occurred. It just so didn't no, no niggles, no stretching, no mobs. And it's whether, you, you, you know Cricky yeah. pretty well by now. He's a, yeah. he's a machine, he just does the work. Um, he puts up with a lot of pain. And a lot of these players do. Sobe does another one. Teasy is not really almost all of them. Yep. Uh, these guys are, love their what they do so much, love their game so much. They don't care about pain. Yep. Um, they'll just they'll go through joint pain. They go through niggles and whatever. Won't tell us because we might drag them. You know. Which can be a good thing <clears throat> and a bad thing. It could be a good thing, bad thing. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so whether Cricky just didn't realise that that was a bad pain, no one's gonna know. It was a while ago now. So even if I asked him today, he couldn't even tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, end of the day, it happened. There was no real sign of why it happened. Uh, same with Adam Doyle, our uh, point guard. 
he broke his foot during the season. Okay. Um, and normally with a foot injury, my foot feels a bit sore. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at it. My foot's still a bit sore. Well, that's interesting. Foot's well, still sore. Get scanned. Go get everything done. Broken. What? What was the injury mechanism for that? Well, what? What? Like, was he training? Was he running? Was he jumping? Uh, he stepped on a ball. Okay. <laughs> so again, that's something you don't really train for. Yeah. You're not going to put balls around the court and go just run over top of all of them. And yeah, yeah, yeah. See if you can prevent it. You know, there's like fit, the old fit balls where people just stand on fit balls and do shit. Yeah. Yeah. Don't need it's to not going to do it. <laughs> it's just one of those things where the ball came down, his foot came down at the same exact same time on top of it, and the foot broke. Okay. It's just it's a freak accident that's not going to happen. Same as Ramon Moore last season broke his foot. Mm-hmm. He landed, someone stepped on his foot as he fell and rotated and it snapped his um, mm-hmm. bone in his foot. We can't do much yeah, better. Yeah, things. Of um, so creaky was the only soft tissue injury, uh, and I still like, I'm a really critical person. I don't <coughs> I don't like crosses against my name, and I know they're going to happen, but I use them as. Um, tools to make myself better next season. Yeah, of course. So even with these foot injuries, they're, they're nothing I could have done about them. But next season, we've already implemented ways to strengthen the feet. Yep. Um, I've already looked at ways that we can decrease even that one hamstring injury from last season. What can I do to make my programs better to even take that away? Yeah, next season might be shoulders. I don't know. You always going to get something. <clears throat> And then you're gonna take you're gonna take your your minutes that you've got with the players. Your hour and a half. You're gonna go right. You're gonna fix the hamstrings up. Yep. You're gonna put the time to your hamstrings. That'd be a similar thing to some of that. So a random's gonna yeah. come up. Okay. And, but that's when you go. Now what can I do to help that? And it's just yeah. you just keep. And that's where study comes into it again. You just gotta know. You just keep layering on top and layering on top. And yes, there's only so much amount of time. But if you balance your program as well enough, then. Injuries become less and less. Again, I'm never going to say I'm, never, I'm always going to get rid of injury. Of course. But that's a goal I've got. Yeah. My goal is to never get an injury. Yeah. That's what I keep aiming for. Yeah. And if it happens, I'm going to fucking celebrate the hell out of it. <laughs> I'm going to ask for some massive money next time. Cash thing. money. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, obviously I understand that being completely unpredictable, you don't know when someone's going to jump in front of you. Uh-huh. You don't know what is underneath you when you come down from getting a rebound. Yeah. So... The, the nature of the game itself doesn't... The nature of the game itself... <coughs> and this is any field sports or basketball... Like yeah. basketball or court sports. Sport in general, right? If you've got players opposing you and you've got to get through them or around them or to something that they're going to be blocking, then the nature of the sport is injury prone. Yeah. Rather than this is a safe sport. Yeah. You know, and so you're always going to be pushing... Or like... Like, you're, you're basically pushing yourself here. You're trying to reach that unattainable goal, you know, with all these factors going against, like, against you. And so, yeah, if you do get to that point where you find a team with no, no soft tissue injuries, you're going to get, like I said, you're going to get your niggles and you're going to plan to go push through that stuff. But if, as soon as you get to a point where you've got no injuries whatsoever, that to me, I think that to me, that, that's a phenomenon that would rarely occur. It'll probably happen once in your career. Once. Maybe. If that. Maybe. You know, yeah. yeah. And so, like, I've never heard of another, another coach who's had no injuries whatsoever. Even, as we mentioned before, Darren Burgess, who yeah. I believe is one of the best SNCs going around. Yep. He gets injuries. Yeah. His players have injuries. Yeah. So, and I'm a fraction of what he is in yeah. knowledge in SNC. So, and constantly growing. Like, yeah. his knowledge base constantly goes. Yeah. And you never, you, yeah, it's always that, like, I'll learn more and then you'll find a way to ruin your earlobe and then I'll ruin more yeah. you'll find a way to fuck up your TMJ, you know, yeah. like, yeah. All, like that kind of stuff. And you're always working against that. So you try and put those, as many of the systems in place as you can. I want to talk about this in a second. We're going to have a little break right now. Um, and we'll talk about those systems that you will put in place um, or what you might, what a, what a, yeah, what things you would do with the time you got available. All right. We'll be back. I want to, the way I see it is that the public or like outside of what we know, of, obviously we know our players um, and we know our like obviously coaches and whatnot a lot better than um, the other, like, like I said, the public or whatnot is that we get into, what did I write down in the notebook? I wrote down the person behind the player hmm. and that's what we can talk about, you know, or the yeah. person behind the coach. They'd put something different on that as well because I don't think many people talk about that side of things. They don't. They always talk about fucking the player. Yeah. You can't cool. They do cool shit. Yeah. But that's out every day. Everyone knows that. That's out every day. And you see the highlight reels. 
We want to talk about what goes on deeper than that. How do they get to that point? Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> some one of like a lot of stuff I talked to, I talked about with the chits was people don't know how fucking weird she is. All right, she's on another level. She's awesome. Like she's awesome, but she does whack shit that I wouldn't expect from a like nineteen year old, yeah. nineteen year old, twenty year old. You know, um, and we had a we had a conversation with. When was it? it must have been the first audio. I didn't tell her that I was. Um, I didn't tell her that I was uh, like recording audio. And she gets in the car. Um, what's that? What's that little thing there? Ooh. Okay, that's it there. Oh, it's coming up again. Um, pull that down here. I didn't tell I was recording. <laughs> I didn't tell I was recording. And she gets in the car and I was talking to her about um, what she'd done that day. Right? And I said, um, I said, what did I say now? She gets in and I've got the phone sitting uh, in the that dash console, I've got the microphone on. And I was like, hey man, what did you do today? And the first thing she said to me, she goes, hey man, I wrote myself a contract. And I said, what? <laughs> she goes, I wrote myself a contract that says I'm not having any donuts until I finish my career. <laughs> and I was like, uh, what? And so she basically went through it and she was talking about, um, you know, she she feels that in order to part of it was that in order to be the best player, she can't be allowing herself these like little um, like deviations from you know health and fitness and recovery and whatever. Shit. And I said to her, <laughs> like we were talking, I was like, so so you wrote yourself a contract, she goes, yeah. I said, you hand wrote it top, she goes, I hand wrote this contract that I now keep with me everywhere I go, no matter where she's in the world, she keeps it in her little travel diary, like a travel book, um, and as a reminder that she's not allowed to do that until she finishes her career. And, and I was like, you're like fucking 19 years old, right? And that could be another 15 to 20 years. And she was like, I know. And like, thinking she would commit to it. And I was like, like, that's crazy. That's good. That's that's like how many players, like how many players and people would go to that extent where that's what she's in the spare time that day. You know, that's what she, she wrote a contract. And then I said to her, "So what did you do? Like, like did you have a final like hurrah?" She goes, "Yeah, man. I went to bakery, bought myself was it three donuts and a bagel, and I fucking smashed it." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Sick," <laughs> you know. But like that that kind of stuff, like I was saying, is that. Mm. The the player or the, the person behind the player, and the person behind the could be there. Um, the person behind the coach, the person behind the the, the you know the admin staff, the strength person, whoever it may be, I think is a big push that what I want to put out there is because, like I said, people see the highlights mm -hmm. and and the, your highlights. People see you at oh you're thirty six in S and C. That'd be so good to do. Like yeah, it is. I fucking went my ass off for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, and no one sees that that doing there. I tend to think, like, I get it a lot with, with the girls is that, oh, they're just naturally gifted. No, they're not. Like, like you, you've got a six or seven year old female playing in a male team. Like, like Chids and M, amongst a whole bunch of other girls, would play in male teams. Because they had, they did have skill. Yeah. But then they had to develop the skill. Yeah. You know, and then. Like we talked about the um, the social support that they have, you know. So I said she was like, obviously, okay, you're six or seven years old, you can't drive. You know, you couldn't drive by yourself until maybe what two years ago. So you would have had a lot of support from your parents. Be like, we would drive you up and back for trainings and this sort of stuff. And one of my girls, like Emily, um, M Condon, she lived in Piri. so her parents would drive three hours to get to the training, three hours back. How many times a week? Three times a week. Wow. And I, like, I may be wrong, but um, it might be twice a week, whatever. Yeah. But there was that travel, you know, and so they invested, they got sacrifices to help go there. And you don't, you don't, no one talks about that because when you get to the media that come into it, the journalists and I watch what they ask the players and they watch what they ask the coaches. And it's like, how do you feel after that game? Or what does it might be for you this week? What does it mean to, like, don't give a fuck, you know? Yeah. And like, Alex actually said that when we were talking about, <coughs> we were talking about, the 
questions that she gets asked from interviewers. And she gets that the same all the time. Mm. How does it feel playing for your country? How does it feel scoring the first goal in, in, home, like in, in front of a home crowd? And how does it feel? And she goes, I end up having to make up answers because it's the same questions. You know, and that's why I was you like, Because you get answering the same Because you get answering the same shit. Yeah. You know? Um, Yes, that's what I want to bring out with this. I think it's good, like, welcome back to the Martyrs, Murph and Martyrs show. We've just been out, having a little break, talking about the idea behind the show. Yeah. Got some good ones. Research, <laughs> but I just want to put this out there. That's all my clientele and my athletes and my staff. <laughs> we found the ball. <laughs> so... This is Conte's ball. This is Conte's ball. Conte's oh, ball. Okay. Right, this is Conte's ball. Sorry. We thought... It got it, looked after. It, it's well, the same condition, isn't it? It went... It, it's, it's very same condition. It was dirty. It went missing from the gym about... Oh, six, shit. eight months ago. And I thought one of our soccer girls had stolen the ball. Shame on you for thinking <laughs> that. Look, <laughs> like, I'm like... Like, who, who else was still a soccer ball? It's a good soccer ball. Why would Murph the basketball still a soccer ball? I never, ne- Murph the basketball never even crossed my mind with the, with the soccer ball. And so Murph has just shown me his office at the Titanium Security Arena. And I've been here a couple of times in that time period to watch yeah. games. Yeah. And little did I know... Metres away from him. Metres away from him. <laughs> Ball was there. So thanks for, thanks for turning it. Terrible. Are returning it or getting busted? <laughs> or getting busted, getting busted with the ball. <laughs> Oh man! It definitely was not intentional. I can promise you that. And I think as you opened the door, as you opened the door, and I was like, uh, my first like it was like shock, right? My first it wasn't shock. It was kind of like I had to like break. I was like, I recognize that ball. <laughs> and then what that I was like, that's a that's my dirty ball. <laughs> the gym. Dirty ball. <laughs> so I think what we we're talking about just just before was um before I, like break was the the systems that you put in place. Yep. All right. So we talk about the <clears> systems you put in place. You're going into now your third. Preseason with the boys, yeah, um, with thirty sixes, and you were saying about, um, you know, the first season you look at like the functional, functional training, put it put it that way, and, and how that helps injury prevention, and then the next season, like now you talk about looking at feet and strengthening feet and, and whatnot. What does that look like when you get together with the doctor and the physio to go? All right, cool. We reviewed last season. Here's what we want to sort of achieve, and then here's how we put those in place. Like if you're talking to young S and Cs or young PTs or whatnot about long-term planning, like what would that look like to you at this point in time, so where you are right now? Uh, so it was actually meant to meet up with the physio today. Um, yeah. They got cancelled for whatever reason, but they- Murph and Marta show, that's why. That's right. <laughs> More <laughs> important things to come about. Um, no, to be honest, it was, because I'm in toward the end of uni yep. semester, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm pretty bogged down with study, but uh, I'm within the next, the next week, I will be meeting with the physio. Uh, not so much the doctor, he's, he has an input and has said a lot of stuff, um, but sort of myself and the physio run the show. Yep. Uh, yep. Between the two of us, we run the show. So we meet up, we'll go through, we pretty much revise the previous season. Mm-hmm. So we'll get together and say, okay, how do we think last season went? Okay. We don't do it straight away because we just want to let things settle, let everything digest a little bit. As you know, last season was an emotional finish, so we didn't want to catch up too quickly. Um, so we let that just settle down first. Now, okay, now it's time to start focusing on next season. So we'll get together and we'll analyze the previous season. What worked, what didn't work, what did we have to change halfway through? Uh, why did we have to change it? And what can we now implement to, or did those changes work? And now what do we need to implement this season to prevent anything that didn't go right last season? Okay. What do we keep from last season that we know now worked that we're gonna keep going the, the next season? And is season that, that's, Data driven? A lot of it's data driven. And um, then intuition? Intuition as well. I think, I don't know, I, I love, I, I really do love the data. I mean, you know, studying sports science, I need to love the data without a doubt. Um, but I'm still very much gut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I've built a really good relationship with all of my players um, that I know them not so much by the numbers, but by their body types, their personalities, yep. their what they like to do, what they don't like to do, what they respond to. I think you need to find a happy balance between the two. So last season I went to a bit of a divergence here. Yeah. Last season I went to the NBA Summer League and spent some time. Which is on now, isn't it? Or starting uh, soon? It starts in early July. Early July, okay. Um, so I was over there last season to meet up with some head SNCs in the NBA. Uh, and I met with 
a few different types, but three main people I met with. Um, these were all three. There were three guys. One of them was actually a. Actually, he worked under the head SSC, who's a female Suki Hobson, who's actually <laughs> a, a. I can't remember if she's an a Aussie girl or she did a lot of work in Australia. I okay. one of the two, but she's very well known in Australia. What was her name? Suki Hobson. Suki Hobson. S U K I Hobson. Yep. Uh, she's the head SNC for the Milwaukee Bucks. Okay. So I've spoken to her a fair bit, but she got me onto her, I guess, offsider, uh, Michael Davies, who's incredible SNC over there anyway. I've mm -hmm. um, got to catch up with him. So he's with Milwaukee. Uh, Todd Wright, who's with 76ers, Philly. Yep. And uh, Dan Meehan, who's with Brooklyn Nets, who is an Aussie. Yes. So Dan's an Aussie. He used to work for North Melbourne Footy Club. That's right. Um, all of them, so uh, Todd, Michael, and Dan, all had different ideas on SNC. And it was, I'm glad I really got to spend time with those three because I got to see three different perspectives on how to be a really, really good, high quality, mm -hmm. professional strength conditioning coach. Um, so Todd Wright was the first guy I met from Philly, and he's 100% or 90% intuition. Okay. He doesn't write programs for like the first week or something. He will just nut out his guys. Which is off the norm. Like it's, it's not it's not a normal thing. To, for this day and age, it's yes, not, 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 not for this day and age, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very old school. And he's he's one of the older guys that I met with. Um, you wouldn't know by talking to him. He's so sprightly, so energetic. But one of the other older guys I spoke with, but just so he's still so intelligent. Like he knows um, uh, Gray, Gray Institute, what's his name? Uh, Gray Cook? No, no. last name Gray. Ooh. Gray Institute, anyway. Yeah. Um, Gary Gray. Gary Gray. Gary, Gary Gray. Gray. So he knows all about his work. He does yep. all the anchor mobility and the yep. footwork from Gary Gray. Um, and I think Doug Gray, or well, he's his son as well. Yeah. So he does all of that work. So he knows his stuff, but doesn't do a lot of testing. Mm -hmm. um, he just goes on intuition, goes by what he's, what he sees his players do on and off the court. But his main philosophy was, which is fantastic, his job is to keep players on the court. 100%. That, that's that's 100%. his job. His job isn't mm. to build players. His job isn't to do anything but make sure his players are on the court doing what they're supposed to do every single game. Mm -hmm. that's a, I think that's a pretty cool way to think about it. Um, whereas my initial thought as an SNC was to build the player. They've pretty much already been built. Like, they're there for a reason. Especially in like American leagues as well. Yeah. Like you're, you're talking doubt. athletes at high school. Like LeBron was drafted from high school. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you've got athletes at that level. Yeah. You know, yeah. so there's a kind of a little bit of a divergent um, or a tangential sort of system happening there. Yeah. Yeah. Which kind of would allow him to be that intuitive. Yeah. At that point. Anyway, yeah. keep going. So that was him. So Todd Wright is very much intuition learn his players by looking at them, learning them, watching them, that sort of thing. Then you had Dan Meehan, this end of the scale. Yeah. Who, oh, so, no, sorry, Michael Davies, this end of the scale. Okay. This is a Milwaukee guy and Suki Hobson, who's just data-driven. Everything's about data they do. They test every single inch of the player the whole way through. Mm -hmm. They know everything about every player on a computer, in their minds, they know everything about it. Um, so completely sports science based, which yeah. is, I, I, again, I love that stuff. So it, it was cool. Um, and I don't, again, it's not a hundred percent data cause they do use intuition as well. They're very uh -huh. smart people <coughs> and they know what they're doing in the S and C field, but a lot more data. And there was Dan smack bang in the middle. He knows his players intuition. He's the very much the Todd Wright, but he's completely as much as the Suki Hobson, Michael Davies in Milwaukee. Yep has all the data. So I said to him, like, he's what we want to spend most of the time with, the Aussie guy, maybe because he's Aussie and has got to please him more. <laughs> um, I actually understood what he was saying most of the time. Yep. Um, but I sat down with him and said, you know, tell me about your philosophies in training, tell me about, you know, what you like to do with your boys, because the, the NBA preseason is two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. NBA preseason. I've got nine with my boys, and that includes some travel and that sort of thing. Yeah. I think I don't have enough time. <laughs> the NBA, he told me, we've got two weeks to do something with these guys. So they're just on the ball. They've got to be on the ball. So their testing is it's strict and it's full on. It's, it's very driven. Um, but yeah, he said, I've got two weeks to do with these guys. So I get in, I do some testing. I don't test everything because we don't have time. 
there's not enough time to test everything and I don't need to test everything. Mm -hmm. I'll test the things that I want to test based on the experience I've had so far, based on um, the previous seasons, yep. what their injury rates are on the individual, and not even every player gets the same test. Uh -huh. Some players will get different tests based on their history. Okay. And then I go on by what I know as a coach, by what I know from that player. So he knows his players well enough yep. now that he knows what to give them. And that's what I liked. That's where I want to put myself in that same sort of bracket, I guess you could call it, basket, where I like to, I love the data, you know, becoming a sports scientist now, I like to look at things <coughs> and go, that tells me this. These numbers mm -hmm. tell me this story, yep. and it's, it's foolproof. Like, you can't beat data, you can't lie yes. when there's data in front of you. Someone might come to me and say, I really had a really good session. But you know you didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your numbers are way down. You can't lie about that. So I like that sort of things. Um, on the other hand, I like to know my players as well. Mm -hmm. I like to build a friendship and a relationship with all the players where I can walk into the locker room and they all know me. I can be friends with them, get on the court. They respect me as a coach. I can, I can tell them to do something and they do it. But I know their bodies. I know how they react, react to my training. I know what to give them, what not to give them with the data to back it up. So I guess that's probably a little key right there. Yeah, yeah. Data for me is a backup, it's not driven. I'm not driven by data. Yes. I use it as a backup yeah. and as a tool to help my intuition and my knowledge. And it's a huge, it's a huge discussion. <clears throat> well, maybe I said that by the it's been a discussion for, for years, but um, it's coming out now about what type of coaches we have out there, whether you are data driven, mm. whether you are purely intuition, whether you are relationship based, whether you are, um, like you said, numbers based, you know, and I know, which interests me because Dan's background is footy, yep. right? Yep. And footy, like football at the moment, is very much sports science driven. Huge like we're, we're yeah. talking, what, four to seven sports scientists? Yeah, or, around, around that, right. As part of their S&C mm -hmm. team. Uh, and so when you're talking, as, as the stakes get higher in regards to money, stakes get higher in regards to business, you are then, okay, you've got to show where that's coming from you know whereas if you're you know um was it michael found the other end no no uh so todd todd uh, yeah if you're todd 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 knows his players but then when he i'll be, it'd be interesting to see when he moves on what the next one coming up is like yeah what the assistant is like yeah whether they are going you know what like whether the board go we want something more data driven or we want you know we can trust in this because if you've been around for a long time you kind of got your name you know, yep. you kind of have shown some, shown some, like, you've got your performance, your results, whatever, you know, but at some point in time, there has to be that marrying of the two. Yep. And I think it's a very, like, NBA is, is a whole new beast because you've got the two-week preseason, but then you've got an extended season and the playoffs. 110 games. 110 games. And what do you, what do you play here at the NBA? Was, well, so that's 110, including all the playoffs. So say yeah. you make it to game seven or the grand final. Yeah. The, the Let's final. say, what, 90? There's 82 Season 82. games. Yep. Okay. 82, so season, 82 games. season games and then NBL. NBL we have 22. 22. So you've got four times as many games, mm. but you've got a third less. Yep. Or well, no, two thirds less training time. Yep. And so it brings back to that whole then. Actually, quarter the training time. Two weeks to. Two weeks to my nine. Oh, nine. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's three. Um, <laughs> I gave them more. What are you more for? Um, and so you really are. You are. You are looking at you know what what works, and I think moving forward is like you know you do have to know your players like i've seen a lot of a lot of trainers as well and and snc coaches is that they go to the point where it's they don't want to have the personal bond because that takes away from their professionalism yeah i've, I've seen that as well but then you go the other way where you get too personal with them I've and then you, well. you get the lack of respect yeah because you want to move of a friend base so yep. you have to really play that i said play that fine line between but you, you've got to be the way, the way I see things moving forward is that you do then, like you said, take the data and let that guide your decisions within knowing what you want to do with your players and how you're getting the most out of them. Um, and that's that's huge. Like that's the next five five years of, of SNC work, especially um, as things grow and get bigger across all sports. Yeah. You know, across all sports. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it's interesting when you talk about having the, um, like, Suki and... Um, Michael being so data driven, my first thought is how do, how are their relationships with their players then? Uh, I know I don't know a lot about Michael. I've only really met him once and spoken to him once. 
Um, but I know Suki, but I've seen her on social media hanging out with yeah, the boys yeah. as well. So she would definitely have a relationship with the guys. Yeah, yeah. Which, even though... So, I don't know if I put it out the wrong way where I think that Michael and Suki are doing the wrong thing. I completely don't. No, no, no. no, and no I no. think that just works for them because that's the kind of coaches they want to become. Yeah. Um, I think it's absolutely important and imperative that if you're going to be a professional coach in a sporting club, you need to know your players, regardless if you're data-driven or just intuition-driven. Yeah. Um, you need to know your players well. You need to on be a, able to... On a personal level. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've pretty much caught up with every player outside of basketball, or outside of the stadium. Yeah. Like, Creek and I hang out regularly. I was in the US, and when I was in Vegas, I was hanging out with Sobes. Um, I've caught up with most of the other guys just catching up for breakfast or yeah, for lunch yeah. or something. And so I know all of the players as a friend, not yep. just as... <coughs> and that's what Joey said to me in the beginning as well. He said, you need to be careful because these guys are going to bring you into their group. You're, you're, you're essentially going to be <laughs> one of the players. Protect yourself. Yeah. <laughs> because they can, cause other coaches can get too caught up in being one of the boys. Exactly. Where you need to be, okay, I am one of the boys, but I'm also their coach. Yeah. So I've actually, last season, Sobes, sorry mate. <laughs> last season, so Sobes is uh, obviously one of our star players. He's a great player. Um, obviously, I think he's going back to the States for Summer League. I know he's about to get married, so congratulations on that. Um, but he's so driven, so focused on what he's doing, so damn strong-willed. Um, last season, we had a bit of a head-to-head -head where I'd say, so, do the exercise. He's like, but not about. So, do the exercise. Blah, blah, blah. And I'd just leave. I didn't want to stop anything. Yeah. And I'd go up to him afterwards and I'd say, oh, that's beautiful. Ah, uh, that's beautiful. <laughs> the lights just went on in the stadium. Oh, fantastic. And I'd, I'd say, what's going on? Why aren't you doing the exercise? And he'd give me a reason. I'd say, I'd give him something back. And we just let it go. We just yep. wouldn't say anything. He knew that I wasn't happy. I knew he wasn't happy. But there's no point getting bogged down with it. But we resolved it pretty quick later on. And we'd go, let's figure out a plan now. I think that's the important part of it. That's mm. the relationship coming into it there. Is that he knows that I can be upset with him. Uh -huh. And I know that he can be upset with me. But it's not going to affect the club it's not going to affect the, yeah, the yeah. relationship in the end it's like you and your girlfriend me and my wife we're going to get shitty with each other mm -hmm. but we know we, we're going to resolve it and move on of course. that's what i was able to do like within the training session so and i we're at the end of it we're fine again we're good that's where relationships become important because if you're just just data they've got no real respect for you as a human exactly and they need to see me as the professional and the human being yeah and i can attack them from both ways like that yeah yeah, yeah, and you have that. At the end of the day, you're still paid to get a job done. If I'm just their friend, Joey's gonna get rid of me. <laughs> exactly, and, and I'm back to working for free. And you're back to working for free. Um, <clears throat> and that it brings up it, like it brings up those those points of then yeah like how do you toe the line? And this is what we're talking about before in regards to learning everything you can, right? It's not just about exercise selection and program design. No. You have to learn about, you have to be, you know, human psychology, and yeah. then you have to learn motivation, and you have to know personality styles and personality traits, and how you then, for the best coaches, I think, for the best coaches, best yeah. PTs, um, understand how to get the, the, the best out of people, but it's not just the best, it's how to then maneuver through when they're not having the best times. Yeah. Um, or when there is something that might come up, and you're like, hand me off to the exercise, you're like, nah. And I'm like, all right, well, something's obviously going on here and we can sort it out later and you you not discard the session but you know we're getting the best out of that point in time yep. but then it's how you resolve it later that, that matters you know and I think no like a big thing dealing with well the, the females is that girls do tend to hold on to things a lot longer you know and so I don't tend to see it personally with like myself and my players at all but it's more like if players and teams have issues or, or um, players and coaches have issues, then it, things do tend to take a bit longer to resolve. Um, and so you do have to have those understandings if you're working in, it's not just a female thing, it's also guys as well, but like, you do have to have the understanding of, okay, well, what is going to help us then take the next step forward? Yeah. And how are we going to then take the next step forward and where, where are we going to go from here in regards to then getting the best out of everyone yeah. at that point in time? I think it's, um, so I have done some study in human psychology and the brain and all that sort of stuff, and I like to think that I understand 
the human personality quite well yep. individually. Um, and one thing that this, this is going to be a bit of a relationship thing here as well. So we're, we're teaching everything. <laughs> we're teaching everything. Uh, one thing that um, myself and my wife do, like, like everyone else, we argue and we argue big. But we make sure that every time we argue, we're never going to walk away from each other. Yep. So we can sit there, we can argue for an hour straight and get really angry and frustrated or whatever, but we'll never walk away until we've given each other a hug and kiss and resolve it. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a rule, a relationship rule we've got, and it's a non-compulsory is what we do. Yep. And without the hug and kiss, that's what we do down here. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we will have an argument, we'll have disagreement, and even though... We're, we're not liking each other at that point in time, I will not walk out of the stadium until yeah. me and that person have resolved everything yeah. and come up with a solution <coughs> to then move forward and keep developing and getting better. Yeah. So I might leave it for the training period and that time when Joey's got him. I'm not going to interrupt anything there. Yeah, yeah, of course. But as soon as training's over, let's go let's jump off and have a quick chat. Yeah. And within five minutes, everything's cooled down. We go, this is my point of view, this is my point of view. Oh, that's what it was. I didn't think it was that. Let's come up with this solution. This is what we do from now on. We're good, happy, done. And that's just the way it works. And, and it seems to work really well. And it, it just kept that relationship going and building, even building. I mean, that's how you build a relationship is yep. to learn a bit more about each other. So I make it my ambition, my, my challenge, should I say, every season to learn more about my players yep. so that they know and trust me further. And when new ones come in and I tell them what to do, yep. Soap's going to go, just listen to him. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, Freaky yeah. goes, ah. so I've got a, a new guy coming in, uh, Jack McVay. Yep. Our rookie. He asked me to send him a program. I sent him a program. He, Creaky went and saw him not long after I sent the program. And he's like, who's this Murph dude? Who, who the fuck is Murph? Uh, he, Creaky's like, why? He sent me this fucking program. It's got like six sets of this and then this exercise. And what the hell is this about? It's, it's off season. Creaky's like, dude. Do it. Mm -hmm. I don't care what he's sent you, how hard it is, what what it's about. Just do the program. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're going to struggle in our preseason. So we're a massive running gun team. We're fast. We're fit. We have been known as the best in those two areas the last two seasons. Uh, you just got to do the work. <laughs> like if, if these boys will struggle if they come into preseason unprepared. Of course. So I don't want to. I don't want to start from scratch. That's not what I'm about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to come in ready to keep working uh -huh. to take it to the next level again. Um, so Creaky said to him, "Just do the job." And so that's what I've built with Creaky. Yep. That's our relationship. So if someone says this about Murph, Creaky comes back and says, "No, he knows yep. what he's doing. Do the job." Yep. Rookies come in now already respecting the SNC, the head coach. Joey's got the same thing. Yep. Kevin Brooks, our assistant coach, does the same thing, where they come in and they already have a respect for us because the other players do. Because we already built that buy-in, you know, and that's, I think, buy -in, yeah. it's, it's the buy-in with the players and, and how you relate to and, and convey. You know, some players you'll get will be data-driven. Yeah. And want to know why and how yep. and when and what's going to happen to my body and how long I'm going to recover and do I have to take 15 minutes or 23 minutes? Yep. So, those, but then you also got the other players that don't shit. Yep. And so it's, it's building that buy-in. I say buy-in because lately I've been looking a lot on, like I mentioned before, like Brett Bartholomew's mm -hmm. stuff. And um, a lot of other guys are still coming out with that building buy-in because if you can build buy-in with a core group over a season, then, because I was going to ask you about new players coming in, right? So then you've got that buy-in from the ones that are here. Some might leave, right? But you've got a core group that know and respect what you're doing mm -hmm. as the coach. And if that core group knows what you're doing, then when people come in, they they initially might have barriers or they might um, not like what's happening, but because it's the culture, it's a team culture and it's, it's the way things are done, yeah. it's a lot easier to then move on, you know, and, and, and move forward together as a team, you know. So my question to you is that that first season, then, and I think you, you have discussed this with me briefly before, the first season you came in from their last SNC coach, you're, you've now got the job. So you've already got a relationship with Creaky. Yeah. How did you, or did you have a relationship with the other boys? And if not, like, how did you then establish yourself in, in that team to, to build that buy-in for that first season where you've only got, you know, said two hamstring injuries in the season? Yep. Um, <coughs> I guess for me, so one thing I learned from a previous coach of mine was you don't, you can't tell people what to do. Yep. You, there's no way you can go and say, you've got to go do this because there's no, you're not going to back it up. So... You never inform people, you influence people. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's a huge that's thing huge. with any coach. That's a nugget. Nugget. That's, that's a, a nugget. nugget. That's a big nugget. You can never. You can never inform someone. You, you must it. influence people. Yep. So if you want to get something out of, doesn't matter who. Again, we're teaching everything. Doesn't matter if it's your <laughs> employees, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband. Doesn't matter who. It is, your kids. Mm -hmm. You tell them to do something. There's a good chance they're not going to do it, or do the opposite. Whereas you influence them to do something, so you're doing it in the first place. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, um, can't even another word for it. But you're influencing by showing them yourself. Yep. They're more likely to follow those footsteps. So I I train five times a week, four mm -hmm. or five times a week. I make sure that I look like a strength conditioning coach. I make sure that when I tell them to do something, I can do it first with good technique. Except you can't dunk. Can't dunk. <laughs> Rub that in, why don't we, we might, we <laughs> might edit that one, we might not. Chop that in. <laughs> <laughs> Can't, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Let's go with that one. Yeah, no, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Keep going, yeah. So, you know, if I want to go do something on the court, I've got to be able to do it first and do it well. Exactly. You know, if I yeah. tell them to go eat healthy food, they need to see me eating healthy food. Mm -hmm. They need to see me doing the right thing nutritionally, otherwise they're going to say, you tell us to do all this stuff, but you're why the hell aren't you doing it? Exactly. You know, so it's it's quite important. I should do more yoga with them as well. So maybe next season I might do a bit more yoga with them. But everything I do, they know that I know what they're going through. Yeah. You know, maybe I've, I've never been at this level of sport. I've yeah. played basketball for eight to 11 years between district and social, um, but never anywhere near this level. But they know that I know what basketball is about. Exactly. Uh, I can't shoot as well as them, but I, they know I know how to shoot. Yep. Um, so it's, it, I think that's really important that everything I tell them, they know that I've been through. It's, they know my story about bodybuilding, how I put myself <coughs> through crazy stupid diets and training 17 sessions a week and all that sort of stuff. So they know they have, have a respect for me when I tell them, just get through this pain, yeah, yep. just push through these barriers and you're going to get the result afterwards. Yep. They're not going to argue saying, well, you've never been through this, what the hell would you know? They stop very quickly and go, oh, shit, he sort of has. Yeah. So that's what I used initially. They all started to know my story very quick. I would tell yeah. them, I sat down with them and said, this is me, this is who I am, this is what I've done, this is how long I've been in the industry for, these are my sporting achievements so far. Is that like a, like a team, like say like a team meeting? Individual. Start? Individual, okay. Every yeah. preseason we sit down, we have an Albanese row. One player will come in and I'll sit down with them and talk to them. Yep. Um, they're pretty quick now that I know the player, but the first one I had was a solid 15, 20 minute talk. Yep. What I would tell them, this is exactly who I am. This is who you're going to be dealing with for the next season. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got any issues with me, good or bad, tell me. Yep. If you think I'm doing a shit job, walk up to me, to my face and say, Murph, you're doing a shit job. I'm more than happy going, cool, why? <laughs> they haven't done that yet. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm still around. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, they, they'll be the first ones to say that, I'm not going to say the, the C word they normally say, but Murph is the strong s hook. They say so you're a champion. Yeah. Champion. <laughs> um, so they have a, a good respect for me that I know what I'm doing in the gym because I can show them what I'm doing in the gym. Yep. Therefore, they do that in the gym. And you've got an understanding of playing yourself <clears> and doing something. I know and, and you're, you know, you've got the backing of the coaches and you've got, you know, like it's not just that one factor. Yeah. It is multifactorial, but um, it's interesting. So, like that first season, then. So, when you start to talk to them about your story, so you, like you're a fresh SNC, right? Yeah. That first season, you come in the sixes, and you like you're sitting in this room, and you have got players coming in. Like, how are you feeling? Are you nervous? Are you more nervous than them, or are they more nervous than you? Like, how are you? How do you deal with that situation? So initially, I guess to answer the second part first. Are they okay. more nervous than me? Uh, depending on the player. So initially it was really hard to read someone. So DJ, who's now become a good friend of mine, Daniel Johnson, uh, number 21 for the boys. Uh, he was, what was that? Not my number. Um, he was, he is a very quiet kind of player. Like mm -hmm. you would look at him and think, a lot of people think he's arrogant. People think he doesn't care. He cares so much. Yep. And he's the most down to earth, humble guy you'll ever meet. But the way he comes across is different. So the reason I say that is when they sit down in front of me, I didn't quite know what to think of them straight away. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, I just took it at face value. I'm just going, I don't know any of you yet. Just sit down, let's have a chat and just see what happens from there. Um, the same coach that taught me the influence information thing, he said to me, everyone needs to be an actor. Doesn't matter what you do, who you are, 
you need to be an actor. Mm -hmm. You need to act like the person that you're in the situation of. Yes. So I walked into this stadium on day one. Almost like the mirroring thing? Uh, like you got a mirror? Not so much. That's more, oh, okay, actually, that's more communication. Communication, okay. yeah, 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 correct. So not so much mirroring thing. That, that does work, I do you believe. Act like, you've got to act like the, the strong S&C and then you've got to act like the player. Yep. Okay. So yep. when I walked in here, I work, walked into this stadium like I was already a professional strength conditioning coach. Yep. Like I'd been in here for 10 years. Yep. So when they sat down, I wasn't nervous. I didn't act nervous. I didn't act cold. I didn't mm -hmm. act freaked out. I didn't act excited. I acted like the professional strength conditioning coach that is going to talk to these boys and you listen to me, you're going to get the results. Mm -hmm. When they walked out, on the other hand, you're like, yes! I was like, shit. <laughs> I, just, I just sat down with Daniel Johnson. I just sat yeah, down yeah, with yeah. Nathan, Nathan Sobey. They don't even know I'm going, I'm, this is the first time they would have heard this. Oh, really? So I, w I was nervous talking to these boys who I'd watched for yeah. the last two, three seasons play on the court. So these guys were... You know, I'm in the I'm in the world of professional sport now, but I acted like you're the boss. I was the boss. You're the boss. Now I'm the boss. No, you're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think that's that's uh, another bit of a nugget there is you need to act like the person you you want to be, and eventually, like self fulfilling prophecy, mm -hmm. you become that person. Yeah. So now I am a confident strength conditioning coach. Yep. Where I don't have to act anymore. They come in and I am a strength conditioning coach that's, and what I say is, is going to work. Yep. That's awesome. Like, <clears throat> I think the, the way the way I tend to roll with things is that it's a bit easier when you, like I tend to work with, with coaches. When I first started, I had the way I asked them with, with the girls is that I at the coaches and the coach would be like, yes, this guy's in charge. It's a little bit easier when you're, I think, working with the females who mm -hmm. haven't done training before. You know, whereas you don't have to, and you don't have to put on that you know, act as much because I think the way, and this is what I want to talk about as, as we go through this stuff is like, you know, we've got commonality in SNC and training, right? Mm. We've got commonality there. But then you do the basketball, like, say, court sports male, mm -hmm. I do field sports female, yep. both at high levels. And this is where I think things can get divergent is in the relationships with those players. I've never felt like I'm a pretty confident person as it is. I was like, really? Don't have, you, don't have got that, right? but I'm very confident as is. But then I don't feel like when I first meet the girls, like I need to be that okay, I'm the SNC coach, da, 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 because I, I feel that um, any girls that come in, especially like say Premier League soccer, Premier League fully, they either haven't had a training history beforehand or they just are not sure what they're in for, mm -hmm. you know, and so they're kind of like they're ready to be those players, you know, and I, I feel like. The communication also is, is is that a little bit different. Like I don't feel like like I still we still have personal relationships with with the players definitely, um, but it's on that it's on that sort of different level where you know like yes I was still up for breakfast and coffee and whatever, but you're you know like you were saying about before being one of the boys, I would be like yeah I'm one of the girls, yeah, a little bit but not like a lot, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, so I, I feel I feel like. When you get into the like the team sports side of things at those elite levels, the issues that come up with um, males and the issues that come up with females are similar but different. Yeah. You know, following following all the way through. And so that's probably where things. When, I think once we start getting players, it will become more apparent. Dealing with like talking to the players and seeing what they what their thoughts are and how they bond, and then you know the girls and what their thoughts are and how they bond and whatnot. Um, because it's definitely something that I've been super intrigued to watch you know my background i did a lot of stuff with the soccer boys mm -hmm. all right you go from soccer boys to soccer girls there's a huge difference yeah right you know um and so boys you know as you know, boys will say nah or the boys have a preconceived idea of what they want to be doing and like like you said with um jack right what is this shit yeah what's this program you know i know what i'm going to do was i i it's very rare I probably couldn't think of one situation where I've had a good question what I provided them in regards to training because I don't think there's that, you know, that that base of this is what we need to be doing, you know, or this is what I want to be doing, yeah. you know. Um, so it's a lot easier to then sort of ease that side of things and then obviously you've got a lot of other stuff to, to sort of work with in, in, that, in that space, which is fucking, there's so much shit that we can talk about mm. in that space. Get ready. Um, this, I just want to show the, the courts. Yeah. 
This is sick. So how are we all like? So we're running out of time today. The Murph and Mata show, because we, we were expecting, though I asked how we were expecting, like, you know, we booked for 12.30, you know, 12.40. Yeah. Maybe, I, ha- I had a booking at 2 o'clock. I was going to go rock climbing. An hour and 39 minutes ago. An hour and 39 minutes ago. <laughs> but, but it was good because, you know, she was sick, so we couldn't go rock climbing. Thanks, Lauren, for that one. Um, but I think we, like, the way we want to move forward with this show is, this is an experiment. Hmm. We didn't know what was going to happen. So the way we're going to move forward is that we're basically going to look and look at we're getting we've talked about getting coaches in, we're going to get players in and chat to players. We're going to talk about shit that comes up in the industry because there's so much shit we want to talk about in the industry itself. Training S and C onwards. Yep. I think. Um, Murph might talk about marriage because I know you mentioned a bit of relationship stuff oh, there yeah. as well. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Bring that back. Steph will love that. Steph will love that. So I think we'll wrap it up here today. Yep. And, and we'll see what comes out. So, we hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. Tune in again. Murph for my show. Thanks. Amen. <laughs> that was an epic, that was an epic clap. So that was-